afternoon all and uh, it's the 1st of January 2015 so a prosperous new year to everybody and uh, now this is from uh, Alice and I have a few other bits and bobs that I've already opened from Alice so I thought I'd make this a post bag Alice special so here we go let's find out what Alice has been sending not that I have any affiliation with Alice I actually wish I did because uh, I quite like to just say, can I have one of everything, please? So in total, we have five items from Alice. So let's start here because this one's out. This is a, a USB switchable load, I suppose you could call it. Uh, we've got two resistors here and uh, the obligatory LED and a switch. And it looks like you can switch it between a load of one amp and two amps, which is quite handy for testing power banks. Now, rather irritatingly, they've put these resistors on so that you can't see any markings on them, but there are a few just tucked down in there. And I think it says W5RJ. Well, 5R would be 5 ohms, and that makes sense because at 5 volts, uh, 5 ohms would give you 1 amp. So with this uh, resistor unit here as a load, and the charge adopter that has a memory which it holds even when the power goes out, you can measure the total capacity of a power bank like this and then when it's finally exhausted there's a very peculiar smell coming off this thing is it hot oh crikey yeah that's extremely hot so these resistors are getting very very hot now if i put them both in parallel the light goes from red to green the current shoots up to nearly two amps it's not quite turn that back to oh we've got a dodgy switch look at that you let me down alice one amp is red, two amps green, with a dodgy switch. Hmm. So this item on eBay is this, and it is a USB load resistor power resistors, mobile power aging resistant module, uh, one amps and two amps. But um, the price is $1.24. Uh, am I on eBay.com? Yes, I'm on eBay.com. Free shipping to the UK and this is of course from Alice 110-1983. Now this next item is interesting. I've been looking forward to uh, getting this. This is a 16 channel pulse width modulation servo driver module. So what can we see here? Well, there's obviously uh, a large chip here. Um, we have 16 servo outputs and they're all laid out with three pins per output, uh, signal, VCC and ground, and they're marked zero to 15, so it's 16 servo channels. Now this chip is 12 bits, so it has very high resolution for driving the servos, and that, I think, is fairly essential. So here's the uh, servo pulse. It's a high going, positive going pulse between one and two milliseconds in duration, repeated every 20 milliseconds. So it's a quite a long period per frame and rather a small window of movement to get the full rotational movement of the servo, one to two milliseconds. Um, I've probably drawn that as two milliseconds, so one would be that. So there isn't a lot of movement for the full range of servo movement and then there's an awful lot of nothing so to have 12 bits of resolution is going to give us well let's work it out um, this is a ratio at two milliseconds this is a ratio of 10 to 1 if we have eight bits to represent the one to two milliseconds with a 12 bit um, decoder we've got four bits uh, to represent the a lot of nothing this was 10 to 1, that gives us 16 to 1. So yes, that gives us a full 8 bits of resolution within this 1 to 2 millisecond pulse. Now what's interesting is that the PCA9685, and that's the chip that's sitting there on the board that this module is based around, isn't actually a servo module driver at all. It's actually a 12-bit PWM I squared C bus unit for controlling the brightness of 16 LEDs and it says it's a 16 channel LED controller optimized for LCD red green blue and amber color backlighting applications 
But uh, 12 bit resolution, that's 4096 different brightness levels, seems quite excessive really. But uh, it's the 12 bit resolution that makes this suitable for servo driving. Now it says here that um, it has a programmable frequency from a typical of 40 hertz to 1000 hertz. And of course, the frequency for servos is 50 hertz, so it does lie within that range. Now this is interesting, this says the PCA9685 is in the new Fast Mode Plus, FM Plus family. FM Plus devices offer higher frequency, up to 1 megahertz, a more densely populated bus operation. Now I assume what they're talking about there is the I squared C bus. So although the chip is clearly optimized or designed for controlling the brightness level of LED backlights, this module is clearly laid out for driving servos, and the chip just happens to have the spec to make it a perfect servo driving module. And my idea for this is to try and offload some of the servo driving work from an Arduino in a radio control system, because I want to do much more with radio control this year, and uh, put that uh, duty for driving all the servos or electronic speed controllers into a piece of external hardware, which will be this chip. So the Arduino will just send commands over the I2C bus, SCL, SDA, there. And then this chip will just free run and keep the servos in the positions that they've been set to be in. So this is another item from Alice. And this is a 16 channel, 12 bit PWM servo drive shield module, I2C, PCA 9685 for Arduino. Now this was a little bit more expensive, $7.12, free shipping, of course, from Alice. Okay, so next we have something with seven segment LED displays on it. So this is a module with uh, dual four digit seven segment displays. Of course, they're eight segments if you include the decimal point. So we have two modules pushed into little turned pin, uh, single in line socket arrays. And then on the back is a MAX 7219. Now I've uh, played with the MAX 7219 before for driving these 8x8 LED modules and they can be cascaded to make a matrix LED display of any length. So the difference here is that instead of 64 LEDs in a square 8x8 metric, matrix, we have 64 LEDs in eight characters of eight segment on this display. And the MAX 7219 has a little trick up its sleeve. It has this thing, the decode or no decode digit selection. So there are four options for decode mode. You've got the top one, no decode at all. You've got code B decode just for digits zero, code B decode for digits three to zero, and at the bottom, code B decode for all the digits, seven to zero. So what's code B decode? Well, this describes it as a font. And what it's used for is for turning BCD uh, data into seven segment font. So you can throw ordinary BCD or binary data at the chip and it will provide decoded font digits between zero and nine. In fact, you can see here in this uh, seven segment character list that it does zero to nine. It also does a dash. So that's the central bar, we presume. And it does four uppercase letters, E, H, L, P. And also the 16th character is blank. Now, recently I bought this module, which has uh, seven segment displays, plus LEDs, plus switches. And this uses the TM1638. But this chip doesn't have the seven segment decode logic. So that's one advantage of the MAX 7219. This of course doesn't have the keys, but you can just throw binary values at this and it will display them as numbers. So this item on eBay, once again, it comes from Alice Womano 1983. Now this is described as a MAX 7219 CWG. Not sure what that means. 8-digit digital tube display. Tube's an interesting word. That kind of hints at Nixie tube, doesn't it? Display control module, red for Arduino. Now, this item, quite cheap, $2.67, free shipping. 
again from Alice. Okay, so here's another little module from Alice. Um, this one is a 10-bit DAC. It's based on the TLC5615, which is this little 8-pin chip here. Now, microcontrollers don't tend to have DACs, digital to analog converters. They have ADCs, analog to digital, but the output is generally PWM. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to throw 10-bit numbers at this thing and actually get 10-bit uh, resolution voltages coming out. So the TLC5615 is a Texas Instruments 10-bit digital to analog converter. So in the functional block diagram we have a 16-bit shift register. Uh, some of that is just dummy bits. That's copied into a 10-bit DAC register and that goes to the DAC there. So uh, the output voltage will be a ratio of the input voltage defined by the 10 bits of the data here. Now in terms of signals, we've got D in, S clock, chip select. Uh, there's a digital out for daisy chaining and then analog ground references and things like that. So this is essentially SPI. It's a sort of serial. This is not I squared C. So possible uses for this. Well, I did think it might be fun to do some audio um, experiments. We could pre-calculate using uh, the Arduino uh, perhaps some sine waves or something like that and then using machine code get this chip to uh, push out uh, all the values to reproduce those sine waves and then perhaps feed them into a loudspeaker or something like that. Another possibility I thought of for this is to build something like uh, a DC electronic DC load where the Arduino can send 10-bit values to the DAC and then the DAC would control the MOSFET and the resistor to uh, consume different amounts of current. Anyway, just some ideas. I thought it was an interesting module, so I got one. And I've just checked that uh, little three terminal device just above the chip, which looks a bit like a transistor, is actually a TL431 programmable shunt regulator, which has a VREF of between 2.5 volts and 36 volts. Now I would imagine they're using the 2.5 volts output from this to act as a voltage reference for the DAC. So this device, once again from Alice, is the TLC5615 10-bit serial interface DAC module, digital to analog. And this is $6.58, free shipping, also Alice. And the final item is a joystick. It's a sort of thing you get on uh, game controllers, but could also be used for radio control. You can see I've got a bit of a radio control theme running here. Now, the outputs we have are signal Y, VCC and ground, signal X, VCC and ground, and signal K, VCC and ground. And I suspect K is the clicky switch that's uh, just on the side there when you press down on top of the controller. Now on here we've got two potentiometers. Um, they are, just one second. Now you can see that, that it says B103, so I'm guessing that's a 10K resistor. But you can see one of the problems with this is that you get very little movement of that resistor because the joystick only tips over by a few degrees. That resistor can wind itself all the way around to the sort of conventional end stops, but we're not getting that range of movement. So you're going to have very poor, well, resolution, I suppose you could call it. And uh, I was watching iForce2D's videos, and he said that these things have a very large dead band in the middle. So this may be a specially made potentiometer with a, a dead band piece in the middle. So we'll check that out, see whether this one has the dead band. Uh, I don't think this was particularly expensive. Uh, no, this was pretty cheap. This is described as a 9-pin joystick breakout module seal, PS2 joystick game controller and all that stuff. It was only $1.60, free shipping, once again from Alice. So just going back to this radio control system for a moment, what I'm thinking is radio control transmitter here. This uses the NRF 24L01 Plus transceiver modules. This will have potentiometers, uh, these joysticks, which can be moved in X and Y. Those analog values going into the analog inputs. This transmits all those analog values in data packets. You can see all the analog values 
there on the screen. Battery is flat on this, so I'm just charging that up. And then on the receiving side, oh, that's just rebooted. Um, we'd have the servo driver module here, so that uh, all these values for the analog channels would be written via I squared C into this chip, and then these servo outputs would uh, drive servos, probably not servos actually, for a quadcopter, it would be electronic speed controllers. But this is the sort of idea I'm thinking of for my radio control system, based of course, as I say, very much on iForce 2D's experiments. And you may have noticed I've made a few changes to my transmitter with this new, well, you could almost call it a vertical shield. So it uses all 10 pins of this connector here. It has the NRF transceiver at the top and a little socket halfway up, bent at a nice angle for the uh, I squared C OLED, and then a single wire there to uh, take VCC in because there's no VCC on this connector row. And so there we are, this little collection of items is today's Alice special post bag.